by the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Naval ROTC Color Guard and the National Anthem, sung by Tamara Thomas. David Leesma, Sandy Magnus, and Chris Ferguson. The outstanding accomplishments of our inductees are a few of their predecessors, other fearless explorers. Before we move on, I'd like to recognize the many distinguished guests we have joining us today. Janet Petro. Janet. And of course, among our distinguished guests are, of course, a number of astronauts. Dick Tubby. The first space shuttle mission to dock with the Russian space station near Bonnie Dunbar. After six and a half years as NASA administrator, Charlie Bowman. for his numerous spacewalking achievements, Jerry Ross. As an engineer, he returned to Earth on STS-81. John Baja, John. <laughs> Ultimately logging 38 days in space, he is the former center director for NASA, Robert Cabana. He is the second American commander of the International Space Station for her nearly nine hour spacewalk. Susan Helm. There's an asteroid belt named after him. How do you get a whole belt named after him? That's what I want to know. One asteroid would be sufficient. Tom Jones. Let's have one more round of applause for our United States astronaut, Hall of Fame astronaut of innovation and exploration and the off-world work that has improved life here on our planet. Today we recognize their achievements and celebrate their contributions to our agency, our country, and our planet. And now, please welcome David Leesburg. David Leesma for induction into the Astronaut Hall of Fame. David Cornell Leesma was born in 1949 in Muskegon, Michigan. He founded three churches and served three others in Michigan, Indiana, and California. They lived only about 15 miles apart in northwest Indiana. From Indiana, the Leesma family moved to California and served as the operations test director for the F-14A and conducted the first operational testing of new avionics and new tactical software in the F-14. <laughs> Dave met Patty with an I, up, and uh, they were married on July 4th, 1974. <laughs> and found a smiling Patty standing there when he arrived. Dave and Patty have six children. That first flight was STS-45 on Challenger. For, for, sorry, 41G, get it right. Conducted the second landing at the shuttle landing facility here at KSC on October 13th, 1984, 89 on Columbia. The mission carried a classified Department of Defense payload and a number of secondary payloads. simulations that included the crew in the simulator and the mission control in the mission control uh, area. On my first flight, my commander, Bob Crippen, taught me a very valuable lesson. 
And one day, uh, the PLT, and that time John McBride, and I noticed a small pressure drop in one of the RCS fuel tanks. And I excitedly asked Crip, and he said to me, let them do their job. They're being trained today too. And besides, they're probably already working on mission control or uh, to, to compete with them isn't what we were trying to do. We were a team, not competitors. Because we were ignored. <laughs> and, uh, and we're able to kid the others about their comments. <laughs> John and I would kid her mercilessly about who is that other astronaut that you can go out and do that in space one. For their concentration. I can't say that that would have been the same case for me, so I really thank them a lot. Now, it's exciting to fly in space. That he was talking to me in a spacecraft that was flying overhead. Now, my voice must have gotten a bit loud. Did I tell you that I tend to get excited sometimes as uh, things are going on? So, you scholars out there, keep adding to your knowledge base, but don't be afraid to question what you think you know. And gentlemen, please welcome Sandy Mack. You have all just heard about the wonderful professional career that Sandy has accomplished. And given the person she is, I don't think it would come as a surprise to anyone and the ultimate no drama team player. I have been on a quest to find out a little bit more strong and supportive family environment, her loving parents, and two younger sisters and a brother who I think the sisters and brothers are all here today. And the Sandy who would become the person we all know became evident at a pretty early age. She knew from the very beginning she wanted to be an astronaut and began to plot out her future early to study physics. And significantly gained a love of travel, of picking up and taking off somewhere, and of having spontaneous adventures. So it wasn't a privileged life that enabled her later successes, but something within her. Yeah, I was doing <laughs> In talking to astronauts who have known Sandy as a friend and as a crewmate, and she was the ultimate team player, bringing no drama, no ego, and yet with a very high emotional intelligence, Sandy had a way of asking logical, simple questions. And that is the Sandy who today richly deserves to be inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame. So congratulations to you and your wonderful supportive family, and let's hang this medal around your neck. Thank you. I'm truly honored to be standing here today to be inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame. You know, throughout my life, I've had these moments of, I cannot believe. The astronaut bug had caught a hold of me in middle school, and actually to this day, I do not have a defining moment of when that happened. It was just there. I wanted to fly in space and accompany that, the half-page photo, about the first women selected as NASA astronauts. It was a profound moment. These women, these first selectees, they showed me my path, and more importantly showed me that there was a path. A young person can form a connection to, and that connection allows them to see part of that themselves in that person. That connection is super powerful. You never know when you'll make a key difference in a young person's life. Things I had no idea which existed, I gave myself permission to explore those interests. And I encourage you too, to give yourselves permission to wander off your envisioned path. And I'm sharing this because my journey is not unique, although some of my experiences have been out of this world. Stepping out of our comfort zone is especially intimidating at the beginning when we're young, when we're still building our confidence and sorting through who we are. For some, the scary factor endures a little bit longer and self-confidence remains elusive. It was another voyage of constant discovery and learning about myself, new experiences, different fields of study. I never imagined that I would travel all over the world and work and live in so many different countries. 
because we live in a world now where you have the opportunity to experience space as a private citizen. For the wonderful introduction, my family and friends for being here to support me, and congratulations to Dave and Fergie on their induction as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris Ferguson. Awesome to be underneath uh, Atlantis, the last commander sitting next to me right here. Uh, first off, congratulations to my uh, Naval Academy classmate, Davy Lisma. Chris has excelled at everything he's done. Growing up in Philadelphia in engineering at Drexel as a pilot and test pilot in the Navy. One is the penguins, a flightless bird. Uh, when Chris came on board, NASA had 100 reunions until a new class came on board, and that, of course, was a very important job indeed. Uh, it took a while for them to fly 115 the first of three ISS assembly missions that he was assigned to. It had been scheduled to fly in February of 23, 2003. Fergie's voice just remains calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> and what kind of sleek, hot vehicle would a person like this drive? A great father and husband, a leader of the highest caliber, and a genuinely good man. I'm also told uh, and Sandy, you can verify this, that The Hustle was one of the favorite songs that you listened to in the astronaut gym training for your last mission. Okay, um, hey, I would like to acknowledge uh, a lot of people. My wife of 36 years, Sandy, thank you so much. You have done so much for me throughout the years. And my lovely newly married daughter, Laura, and her husband, Ryan, are here. My awesome sons, Eric and Ian, are here. My brother, Scott. But for all of you that have taken time to come out. Oh, and Kay. And my wonderful cousins have made the trip. Spring break pilgrimage, driving from Philadelphia to Fort Lauderdale. Not like many of us have ever done that. Miles from here, south on I-95, I strain to see the vehicle assembly building between the trees. Now, knowing the geometry around here, that would have been practically impossible to do. A few short years after college, I found myself in toy training. Eventually, somebody who had far less sense than me gave me the keys to solo in a Navy airplane. As I humbly stand here before you, I couldn't imagine 40 years ago what possibilities lie ahead. But you may not be surprised that 10 years ago, the Kennedy Space Center was practically a ghost town. Soon we'll send humans back to the moon. Companies like Boeing, SpaceX, Northrop Grumman, Sierra Nevada are either already launching or getting ready to launch. And all the while, the U.S. launch business for decades, the United Launch Alliance, was quietly and safely launching over 150 Delta and Atlas rockets. Even though I've been privileged enough to fly Atlantis into space a couple times, I still consider the ground upon which she sits as hell. For the young men and women out there, yes, you 30-somethings, <laughs> Shepard, your children. But what really caught my eye was the list of 60 key inventions and discoveries. On this list were things like the aerosol can, the transistor. This truly seemed to be a list of inventions that had changed the world. And even though this country weathered the flight delays and your stay in New Orleans that you didn't anticipate, uh, and uh, just to say those kind words is just beyond me. So thank you so very much. Congratulations, Chris Ferguson. David Leesma, Sandy Magnus, and Chris Ferguson. Each inductee into the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame is immortalized with a likeness that will be housed in Heroes and Legends. And once again, it is my pleasure to present to you David Lewis, Miss Sandy Magnus, 
and Chris Ferguson, your 2022 United States Hall of Fame astronauts. Would all the members of the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame please join us on stage? Your window. Yeah.